Welcome to the Happy Mama Movement podcast. I'm Amy Taylor Kabaz, mama, journalist, coach, and founder of Mama Rising. This podcast is a space of community and collaboration. We gather stories of matrescence, motherhood, womanhood, and change told by our Mama Rising coaches and mothers around the globe in the knowing that through our stories, we can begin to heal and change the way the world sees, values, and supports mothers everywhere. So, welcome to the Happy Mama Movement. And welcome to an episode of Take the Mic. Take the Mic is an initiative of Mama Rising to hand this platform and this microphone over to one of our amazing Mama Rising coaches and facilitators around the world to give her a chance to share her story of matrescence and motherhood, the stories of the mothers in her community, so we can all hear each other's stories, heal together and change the way the whole world acknowledges matrescence and motherhood. So here is one of our coaches. Catherine Hale. I am mother to three children, uh, a six-year-old boy, a four-year-old boy, and a I have a three-year-old daughter. Today is a big day in our household as my middle one started school for the first time and my youngest has moved into the kindergarten uh, at the same school. So I, for the first time, have all three in the same uh, location, making pick up and drop off um, a lot easier. Um, so who am I? I am um, a former army officer in the British Army, for, served for 10 years. I did 10 years as a transformation director at a big four a consultancy company in London. And I am now a uh, matrescence coach and run my own business, Thrive in Motherhood. So I'm going to tell you today a little bit about my story and um, what has made me the person I am today and the decisions I've made, certainly in the last um, six years since becoming a mother. Um, I had very little expectations on what motherhood would be like uh, back in 2017 when I became a mum for the first time. I went through my pregnancy, life seemed good, the pregnancy generally went well Um, and I just assumed because everyone had kids that I knew and all my close friends had already been uh, become parents as a slightly older mum, I assumed that I would just carry on as normal there wouldn't be a huge amount of change uh, in life uh, and how I lived it. Uh, and I would, wouldn't change my ambitions, my thoughts about my career. Um, I was a highly driven, highly ambitious, career-minded uh, woman and still am. Uh, and I just did not think that having children would impact that. My mother had uh, had to leave the army uh, in 1980 when she had me uh, and I always questioned her to a certain extent on why did she have kids when she did um, because she gave up such a big uh, career for a female obviously in the 1970s and 80s. Um, I'm a mum that likes routine, I like structure, I'm always on the lookout for new opportunities so I embraced uh, motherhood um, although I found clearly sometimes the uncontrollable nature of those early days difficult I I thoroughly enjoyed a new way of life during that um, my first maternity leave um, I like throwing myself into everything that's on offer uh, you know, for baby groups uh, and, and the like um, so I was keen not to change and I therefore um, went back to work and uh, ended my maternity leave after a year and I was excited to go back to work 
and I threw myself into um, a new client, leading a new team. I had a very, very big account at the time, a client account, and um, I had a lot of new stakeholders and I loved my job. I went back to work with the aspirations of being promoted. So I decided two months later to put my promotion case in uh, and it was supported. Uh, and then six months after return, I, I got promoted and I was over the moon. Um, I thought at the point I could, I could have it all and uh, life would just continue uh, as it had done. And then sadly, over the course of the next year, I suffered four miscarriages. And although I was a slightly more mature mum, there was no medical reason for it. Uh, my husband and I had been checked out um, and I just went through with it and found it difficult, but thought, OK, you know, we'll keep trying. I, I'm optimistic. I, I, my body's done it once. I'll, I'll do it again. And I didn't think anything more of the lifestyle I was leading at the time um, with relating to those miscarriages. Um, I now look back and realise that actually I had a huge amount of pressure on my shoulders at the time. And it was probably some of the stress and that pressure that might have um, resulted in my miscarriages. And it was probably my body telling me um, that uh, I needed to slow down. I also had a moment in that first year where I put my client uh, needs and before my child and I was late for a nursery pickup um, and I'd never been late before and I had chosen to uh, go to this meeting that had kept being delayed because of the client's meetings got being pushed back and we ended up sitting down at half past five um, for a meeting that was supposed to start at four. And my uh, daughter, was, uh, sorry, son at the time was due pick up at uh, six o'clock. So I knew when I started the meeting that I'd either have to leave pretty promptly, um, you know, uh, after it started, um, or perhaps run the risk of being a bit late for pick up. And I chose the latter. And I now, looking back on that, realised that that was a massive mistake. My team picked up on it. It was bad leadership. I was a poor role model at that point uh, and I should have had the courage to say no I'm a mum I need to step out to pick up my daughter my son sorry at six o'clock um so those were two sort of instances that will have been worrying around in the back of my uh mind uh, over the last few years I then uh went on very fortunately to have my second son um, in April 2020, which is when the UK went into lockdown. Um, two weeks into lockdown, I um, went into labour and was very grateful that I'd been through it before and went into hospital. Uh, very apprehensive, to be honest, about how it would be uh, with all the regulations that were enforced. Um, However, what having a baby in lockdown did um, teach me was that I absolutely loved the simplicity of life uh, with no pressure, no judgments to get out of the house and do it all, going slow, um, making time to bond with that child. Uh, and actually, in the end, felt feel much more relaxed about that at those early days of motherhood. I was fortunate my husband was around, um, but he was a key worker, or is a key worker, so was still leaving the house for work. Um, but I had uh, my toddler, who we decided to keep off nursery, uh, although he was eligible for it. We kept him at home and I had a, new, uh, a newborn. So what did lockdown and those early days of motherhood teach me? It taught me, in summary, to recognise the simple things in life and the importance of them. It taught me to enjoy motherhood and actually slowing down can support you do that. I had a lot of time for self-reflection over obviously uh, the months of lockdown uh, and would often spend time thinking uh, during those nap times uh, while I was busy doing the cooking or, or whatever I, I was doing at the time. 
Um, however, it also made me realise how much I was self-sacrificing in those early days. I was trying to be the perfect mum, the perfect wife, hold everything together in our house when obviously the world was going crazy. I never put myself first and I think fundamentally it would have led to uh, to, to burnout um, at some point, especially perhaps going back to work with the attitude I had um, following the birth of my first son. Uh, I was tired. And I think hormonally, I was in a very strange place at that point. Because throughout my pregnancy with my second child, I had had in my mind that I wanted a third child. Despite the challenges we'd had, I have always liked to go above and beyond the norm. And so decided very early on um, in that second pregnancy that I, I wanted to have a third child. Uh, and fortunately, I got pregnant uh, only four months after my second child was born. And um, we had a baby girl who was only 14 months younger than my second child. So in lockdown three, I had three children under four. I enjoyed being pregnant. I was very fortunate once I got through those early days of pregnancy that generally they, they went well. Um, however, when it got to my six months point on my maternity leave for my third child in uh, the end of 21, I didn't want to go back to work. I did not know how I was going to juggle such a big senior corporate career with three very young children, two of which weren't at school. Um, and I was confused. I wanted my career I wanted to give 110% to that but I also wanted to be a present mum at home and give 110% there so what I now know is the um in a split I I had that massively uh, my husband has got a senior role um and was traveling and very in engaged with work as well and I knew that we would have to have a full-time nanny if I went back to work, which was something that I, I wasn't keen to do. As I say, I was confused about my identity. Um, I'd always wanted to be um, a partner in my firm. Um, I felt that was the ultimate career success uh, and something that I'd worked for for quite a few years. Um, but I was worrying about not being good enough, not excelling in my career, not being a good enough mum, uh, and then fundamentally regretting um, a lot of those early years. So when did I hear about matrescence and what changed? Well, I had a mummy MOT, uh, as some women do in the UK, uh, and visited a physiotherapist and started doing Pilates with her. And we got talking and she recommended the book Mama Rising by Amy. That book changed my life as it has done lots of other people who have read it. It enabled me to put the pieces of the puzzle together. It explained why I felt the way I did. That it was normal to have such conflicting emotions, such anger and frustration about not knowing which way to turn and what to do next. And it also made me realise that your emotions can be different at any point in your motherhood journey. And for me, it happened really to be at the birth of my third child. I think my things changed for me. But equally, it could be on the birth of your first or it could be five or six years down the line when you all your kids are at school. We all go through matrescence and it, it, it doesn't happen at the same time. So what do I wish I'd known uh, prior to having any of my three children? I wish I'd realised how much I would change, how my values, perspectives, ambitions might, might change um, a lot. I didn't realise my identity shift would happen as much as it did. And all this conversation around balance and work-life balance I found really frustrating as a mum. Balance on a seesaw is nigh on impossible. 
and therefore we try to strive for something as mums that is very very difficult to achieve and so I now wish that I had understood values alignment better and understanding how important it is to live by your values to feel fulfilled and contented um, as a mother uh, and your values do change you when you become a, a mother or you get acquire new values that you want to start living by um, mothers don't have to be present all the time I certainly remember feeling very resentful feeling I was self-sacrificing my time all, all, all the time um, to be present with my kids especially in lockdown when you know clearly we were on top of each other anyway but I now realize that to be the best mum you can be you need to have that time apart you need to grow and develop as a person um, you need time to re-energize so that you can be the best mum that you want to be uh, and you don't need to feel guilty about this when you have time to yourself it is a positive thing and you will bring positive things back to your children so when I go out for a run or do exercise now I'm teaching my children that they need to be active to stay fit and healthy. And therefore, that's a positive that they see that, that I do leave them, you know, often with their dad at a weekend to go and do some form of exercise. I also regret, to some extent, not being able to ask for support more. I hated asking my mother-in-law for support, although she was quite local and she helped us out loads and still does. I remember not even liking my husband to help and having to ask him uh, to help. I, I felt bad that I couldn't do this myself. I'm a mum, I should be able to. I didn't necessarily trust him perhaps as much as I, I should have done and nitpicked at the smallest things that he did, although he was trying to help. Um, now, my husband and I share bath times every night when he's around. Um, we are so much better now at sharing the responsibility of parenting um, because I have realised that you have to let go to be a mum that you want to be and to have that energy to keep keep going. So who am I who am I now after after this journey of motherhood for the last six years? Well, 18 months ago I set up a coaching practice called Thrive in Motherhood to support women thrive both personally and professionally so that they could achieve career success without burnout. Uh, and I focus on supporting women um, reconnect with themselves, reprioritize their well-being and support them regain control of their emotions. I work often uh, or predominantly with high achieving mums who often label themselves as perfectionists who have always been used to succeeding setting themselves high expectations and um, struggle when things don't quite go to plan they've been proud of their achievements but now they're often at a career crossroads they're unsure about what the future looks like and they certainly don't feel that they're doing uh, well enough as a mother or in their career um, also I work with women who feel lost and have lost that bit of identity that they had pre-children who don't really know what's important now and are constantly exhausted facing burnout because they're on autopilot the whole time and they're not giving themselves any time for themselves uh, to re-energize uh, and and get that enjoyment out of uh, broader life and what I help uh, women to do is reframe success so that they prevent that burnout, um, make time for themselves so they have the energy that they can be uh, to uh, be the mum they aspire to be. I help women feel more human again, get their sense of identity back so that they uh, are really living in alignment with their core values and can enjoy uh, and feel contented and fulfilled in, in their life as, as both a career woman and mum. Uh, and as I say, I try and help women stop 
being on autopilot, slow down and look at their emotions through a different lens uh, and give them tools and techniques to better manage those emotions. Um, I've been a coach on and off in the corporate world as well, co coaching senior women um, for the past 12 years. So I set up Thrive in Motherhood to support women because I felt there wasn't enough uh, support in the workplace. Returns programmes only go so far. They're more about policy and practical um, support to, to those women. It doesn't look at those emotional needs, the identity shift, the hormonal changes that women go through. Uh, and I felt that that is needed for all women, but based on my background, I, uh, I felt I could offer um, more and can offer more to those working in that corporate environment with some perhaps senior, senior roles uh, and holding leadership positions. Um, if you want to hear more about my story uh, or more about my offerings, then um, please visit all the links in the show notes. Um, I do offer one-to-one -one private personal coaching um, and predominantly my group coaching programme, which is an eight-week programme taking you from surviving to thriving so that you can avoid burnout and achieve career success whilst being the mummy you want to be. Thanks for listening.